This past week, Louisiana Attorney General Jeff Landry secured more potential COVID-19 medications, including chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine, uh, as it's also called, a potential breakthrough. There's some controversy about that, but we're going to talk more about the medicine involved in that with Toro Family Medicine physician, Dr. Meredith Maxwell. Good morning, Dr. Maxwell. Good morning. So th this was a malaria drug. Um, so why do they think or why is it being used? And, and it is being used in, in a lot of cases, but why is it being used here to fight COVID-19, uh, you know, which is a virus? Well, right. So you have to ha hear a little bit of history behind the drug first. So it was originally made in the 1930s as chloroquine, had a lot of side effects. So they reformulated it to hydroxychloroquine. Um, with less side effects in World War II, and they used it predominantly as an anti-malarial drug. So it's been used years and years and years. Um, so they started using it for, you know, rheumatoid arthritis um, patients. Um, and then I think during the SARS epidemic and the, the, you know, trying to find out new things with like viral, it was found that these medications can inhibit the pH of actually the virus getting into more cells. So there's something called a viral load, and that just means how much of the virus is in somebody's body. So, right? so the thought in layman's terms is that it, it basically theoretically could impede um, or fight COVID-19 at, at the cellular level in the same way as it fights malaria. That's basically why people are thinking this might work. Correct. It, it actually prevents the virus from getting into the cell. So this study that they're all talking about in France um, actually decreased the viral load of the patients to no levels, um, about 70 percent. So people are really excited right now that this could have the same impact on COVID-19. Now, usually we like to wait for the double blind placebo controlled studies. Um, but right now we're in a dire situation. So you know, they want to do this with the chance of helping these people out. So and it, we it, know the we it, know the side effects excuse, already. Okay, excuse me. Is it safe? I mean, that's the question a lot of people have. You know, there have been concerns about heart attacks, for example, or other side effects. Your doctor has to pick and choose and, and monitor you while you're on this medication. But you're on the medication for such a short period of time that usually the side effects that they're talking about are long-term side effects. Yes, you don't want to choose it in heart patients, but when we're in the hospital, these patients are going to be on telemetry. They're going to be watching their heart rate. They're going to be monitored by a physician the whole time that they're on it. All right, so we don't have a lot of time, unfortunately, but, but let's talk a little bit about the immunity test or uh, antibodies and whether somebody has had this um, and can be tested down the road. H how far away do you think we are from something like that and, and when it might be a, you know, readily available and safe to use and, and accurate? Well, we use these antibody tests every day to see if, for instance, you're immune to like MMR. When healthcare workers have to go into hospitals, we have to do something called titers and those titers tell us if they're immune to certain things. So this testing is not a new thing, it's just specific to this specific virus. So that's what's gonna take a little bit longer to figure out. Now, they're probably rolling this out, but they wanna make sure that it's accurate so that we're not giving false positives out or, or, or false negatives out to patients and saying that they're in the clear. All right, Dr. Meredith Maxwell from Toro, thanks and stay safe. We appreciate your time. You too.